Welcome back to our Danny King Lumber Lady Highland Post Game Wrap Up. Uh, we turn our attention to our Player of the Game and Hustle Award. Danny King Lumber uh, is our uh, post game sponsor. At Danny King Lumber, they've got great prices. They've got great people. They've got retail and wholesale lumber. I've bought a lot of treated lumber there over the years. And you can phone them at 569 1430. That's Danny King Lumber. We move to our First National Bank Player of the Game. At First National Bank, we've been banking since 1904 in Scott County. It's banking that lasts. Your family, your future, your bank, a member of FDIC and an equal housing lender. That's First National Bank. And our First National Bank player of the game is Judy Lawson. Judy, the leading scorer in the game tonight for the Highlanders. 12 points on four made three-point shots. Trophy Masters has been serving our community for over 20 years. They've got high-quality sports apparel. They do signs, trophies, plaques, custom engraving. If you need it, they don't have it, they'll fix it for you. That's Trophy Masters, Tony and Jeannie Duncan, 569-8817. And our Trophy Masters Hustle Award goes to Gracie Lewis tonight. Uh, based on the strength of the second-half defense, Coach Wright put her out there to just be all over the point guard for Anderson County, and she did a pretty fair job of slowing Bullock down. So our congrats to those young ladies, and as I said, they will be playing Friday night, either of the two places. Oh, Coach Wright's here. Hey, Coach, I didn't expect you to come up this quick, but thanks for joining us tonight. The boys are getting ready to play, so I'll let you talk, and we'll talk over them because with video we can do these yes, things. Sir. There yes, sir. Yes, uh, some of the comments you just heard, I think we mentioned our Player of the Game and Hustle Award, and, oh, yeah. and it's – it's fallen down for the Lady Highlands the last few games. It's finding a way to score, oh, yeah. finding some consistency yeah. offensively, and finding the player that wants to step up and yeah. above and, oh, and yeah. pull the yeah. team yeah. with them. You know, uh, you know, for a team to be successful, you got to have you got to have three, four, or five kids that can yeah. that can go get you a bucket. And you know, at, at times when when those three, four, or five kids want to go get a bucket, we're a dang good team. Yeah. And you know, the nights that we don't, we struggle and. Uh, you know, I just the la the last four minutes of the first quarter and the four minutes of the first four of the second quarter that just absolutely killed us. You know, I, I watched them in warm ups. Anderson County didn't hit a shot in warm ups, and then they come out there and my goodness and spray it, and we we don't recognize it good enough, and we give up those corner threes, and it just kind of made us scramble. You know, it just it's a it's a tough time to pick your two worst defensive games, yeah. and uh, you know. But, you know, that, that, that's on me. i got to do a better job of getting them ready to play. There, um, there was a little bit of inconsistencies in some of the calling uh, later in the game. Yeah. But, uh, you know, they, they, want, they wanted to get home, you know. Just give me just a second, Coach, as we get the starting lineups for both teams. For the Highlanders, black uniforms, goal will be to our right in the first half. Introduce first a junior. That's number 20, Toby Garrett. Number Brady three Strunk. will be Brady Strunk, the senior. At guard, number 24. Number Brady 24, Todd. also a senior, Gray Todd. At shooting guard, number 10, Sky Babb. Number 10, Sky Babb, a junior. And the final starter for the Highlanders tonight will be Scott Jeffers, where's the number, number one? one? He's also Jeffers. a senior. Thomas coached by Rusty Yaden, assisted by Derek Boshears and Stevie Yaden. Now for the Halls now Red Devils. The Red Devils of Halls. At a post, number five, Taylor Gamble. Taylor Gamble, number five, gets the start tonight, and I'm not sure he's played in either of the previous another, games that we played. Number 21, and that is their post player inside that has been injured. Number 21 is Evan Workman. And another wing, number one, Caleb Number one is Caleb Schaefer. He is the District 4 Player of the Year. At guard, number 14, Elijah Elliott. Number 14, Elijah Elliott. And the final and starter for guard, Hall two, Jake will be number two, Jake Lane. 
That's the starting five for head coach Clint Sharp and the Halls Red Devils. As we're getting ready for the tip-off, Coach, we know we're going on the road Friday night. Yes, sir. How hard do you work the girls between now and Oh, then? we got to work. I mean, there, there ain't no if, ands, or buts about it. Um, you know, we got to come back to work tomorrow and, um, you know, just, just get back to what we do. We got to find a way to get better defensively. We got to play a lot, you know. Um, you know, I, I just, you know, this, these last two I'll take. You know, I just, I got to do a better job. You know, it just, we, we got to be ready to play. We got to, we got to be a little bit more energy, effort, passion, and that, that's on me, and I'll take that one. But, you know, these next three days, we got to work our tails off. Uh, we're not backing off. we got to keep working, you know, and not just for Friday, but for the future. These are, you know. I know, before I even say this, do you have any preference? No. Okay. No, no. I, I knew you know, that. We'll, we'll, we'll go play anywhere you want us to. I mean, we're not going to back down. We're going to go at whoever we get. Uh, we're going to go compete and try to get back to our brand of ball defensively and Ugly as sin on offense, but heck of a defender. And, um, you know, we just got to find our way to get back to that. Hollers open the game with possession. Uh, the miss the other way. Halls with the miss. Brady Strunk with the defensive rebound. Hollers for their second offensive possession now. Jeffers over to Todd. Dribbles down on the left wing, picks up the dribble. Halls opens in a man-to-man. Jeffers outside, needs a little help. Hands off to Todd. Has the screen on the right wing, lost the dribble, picks it back up. Or actually has the ball knocked away and picks it back up. Important game tonight for our boys as Brady Strunk fights oh. his way in. That shot rolls off the edge. Halls hit it last. I think the seniors that we see out on the floor, Scott Jeffers, Brady Strunk, Gray Todd, they need to have tremendous outings tonight. I think so. Coach Jake right here with us, and if he doesn't care, we'll keep him here just a few more minutes. Yes, sir. I mean, his game's over with. He's got this whole game. He's not leaving, so. He may want to go down to the hospitality room. They got some good food down there tonight, Coach. Yeah, do that. No score between our Highlanders and the Halls Red Devils. Highlander basketball running our motion offense against the man. Oh. The pass inside thrown too far away from Strunk, and I guess we touch it last. It'll be Halls basketball. A little discombobulated on the offense first couple of trips. Gamble, as you mentioned, he was hurt the first two times we played him. Yep. He is an absolute difference maker inside. I think we saw them play against Clinton over here the other night, didn't we, Rick? Yes, we did. Yeah. Lob <laughs> inside, they get it to Gamble. Against three Highlanders, that's he a, goes up and scores. That's, an that's, mon- that's a monster <laughs> move, <laughs> wasn't it? Yeah, that's where you know, Clinton is better equipped to, to defend him than we are. That's they match a, up a lot better. A great Dane playing with a couple of chihuahuas. <laughs> Hunters with the ball trailing 2 nothing early in this matchup. Bad. Lost, actually lost the dribble, I think. That was yeah. a problem your team had earlier tonight. The ball just kept squirting loose. I know. I know we just, Inside, we and I'm not sure it was it. a pass, yeah. but it went to Gamble, and he just picked up his fourth point, and it's a 4 to nothing lead for Halls. He's a difference maker. Yeah. What do you gauge his height at, Coach? I'd say he's 6'4", 6'5". And for Halls coming in tonight, I think they've got a little bit that they want to prove because they don't believe they should have lost to Clinton no. here the other night. Even no, though it's don't. Clinton's home court, and strange things can happen here. They just don't feel they should have lost to Clinton. Strange things always happen here. The mm. floating jumper off the baseline, on, no boss. good. Nice pump fake by oh. Strunk. Couldn't get the shot to go, couldn't get the foul to go, and then Halls knocks it out of bounds. Coach Rod, you mentioned that uh, you, your team's got to work not just for Friday but for the future. Oh, yeah. Obviously, you're going with the intent to win Friday wherever Absolutely. you wind up. Absolutely. But how important are these next few days for these juniors, sophomores, and freshmen that oh, are coming back? I mean, it's, it's, it's so valuable. You know, I take, I, I take the approach like bowl practice for colleges. You know, any, anytime you can get make it to a bowl game and you get those extra practices, yeah. it's just it means so much. And, you know, for us, I mean, every practice, you know, like I got to throw Morgan Hooks out there a little bit earlier who has been really good on the offensive end the last couple of games when she got to play. So, you know, for people like that, it's so valuable for her to take a next step and be ready to go and get bit, uh, more varsity minutes next year. Um, you know, like, like I like to tell them all, you know, it's it's always a equal opportunity 
an environment and you know you come in ready to work next year and you gotta you gotta get playing and you know for these freshmen sophomores and juniors uh, they get a little head start and uh, you know they just we just gotta keep working and um, you know I'm, I'm not like I told them in there I'm not ready to be done I'm not and um, no matter the ups and downs of the roller coaster of a season which you always have mm -hmm. um, and no matter how high the highs are and the lows the lows are um, you know we I enjoy it so much. This game has been a part of my life for as long as I can remember. And, um, you know, you just you got you to gotta value every second you get. Indeed. Oh, as Greg Todd went Ooh. down holding his ankle, Turn the knee. Uh, holds with the steel, diving up, and that little floater in the paint is good by Elijah Elliott. With that made basket, it's an eight to two lead for Halls over the Highlanders as Todd will go to the bench checking in Caleb Woodward. I think he tweaked that. And Isaiah Washam uh, also ankle. coming in. I appreciate you all, and I appreciate you all following us this whole year. Well, and, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's such an awesome thing that our, our student athletes can get seen like this. People all across the country can watch them. It's just, you know, it's such a valuable thing. We'll, we'll have Coach Wright, by the way, Rick Keaton, on the round table Thursday night. Yes, sir. We're having a yes. round table? Well, yeah. You didn't know that. <laughs> no, I didn't know yeah. that. You better get your legend of the game lined up. <laughs> he's not here. He was here, but he's not here. He, no. He's somewhere. He's lurking. Yeah. He'll good, be back. Good luck be Friday back. night. Thank you all. Appreciate you. Thanks, Coach. Appreciate Coach Wright joining us, taking the time to come up here. And Caleb Woodward was fouled at the line. He makes the first off his two free throws. It's Halls 8, Highlanders 3. Woodward came in when uh, Gray Todd sort of tweaked the ankle or knee one, and Caleb has made both foul shots to make it an eight to four game. Isaiah Washam, the freshman, on as one of the guards outside along with Scott Jeffers. Clinton with the ball, long skip pass to the right wing. Pulling it down there, that's Lane. Lane looks for the post player inside. Oh, and Caleb Woodward bounced him off of his spot. <laughs> you and I think this official were going to say a walk, and the far side official saw, says that uh, Caleb done more than bumping. Well, if they weren't going to call the foul, then it had to be a walk because yeah. mm -hmm. he picked up his pivot foot. But that's probably the right call. The inbound, this is Jake Lane. Lane couldn't get it away. Five-second violation. That's, that's some ball. good defense there. Three minutes, eight seconds remaining in the first quarter of play. Again, Halls eight, Highlanders four. So Caleb far, Woodward, Sky Bab, uh, Toby Garrett, Isaiah Washam, and with the basketball, um, Scott Jeffers. Gamble's been the difference so far on both ends. Just his presence inside. Mm -hmm. As you said that, there's a still outside driving coast to coast with the ball, laying off the glass to Elijah yeah. Elliott. Who when, has the last four points? When Washam come around right there, it's like he was really wanting the ball. I wonder. If he's feeling hot tonight. Jeffers running the offense for the Highlanders. Coming out on the right wing, that'll be Sky Babb. Babb drives along the baseline. Get in there, yeah. Count it and one, I do believe. Yes, there's the basket. The foul on Ethan Schaefer. Schaefer is first in second. Basket to Sky Babb. Sky Babb for the three point opportunity here. In and the three-point play is certainly big for the Highlanders. Sky Bab and Washam now become the point people. The good jumper, shot. I'm sorry, the foul shot good by Sky. It's a three-point lead, Halls, 10 to seven. Two minutes, 26 seconds and counting in the first quarter of play. Outside with a basketball. Elliott lost it, picked it up, gave it away. Now they go inside. That posting player there is Gamble and deflect away from him. Three on bad, who created the steal, driving down the length of the court. Hammered a little bit right there. Hollander fans want a foul. Maybe he wasn't hammering a little bit. He might have been hammering a lot. As I say that, Isaiah Washington with a steal goes ahead, Sky Bad. Long lead pass, and then it leads to a Sky Bad basket. One point game now. Inside. Good deflection. That was Washington. Watch him again. Just happened to be in that passing lane. These boys are playing some good defense so far. 
back on there the floor for the Highlanders. One of our seniors, Greg Todd, who went out injured a little while ago, back on the court, picks up the foul that time, Elijah Elliott. Highland ball from the baseline. And there's a timeout on the floor. Let's quickly take this break. It's 10-9, Halls with a one-point lead. As we come back from the timeout, of course, Halls with their center, Taylor Gamble, back. But you know the effect in the last game that the Highlanders had? Caleb Woodward, 19 points. He was yeah. able to just get post position, post position. We were able to get the ball to him. He worked the boards very well. And since he's came in the game, we've seen a couple of good defensive efforts from him now. As driving, Todd picks up the dribble back outside. Washington turns, launches it. Boom. Down. Isaiah Washington with a three-pointer. Oh, he on wanted the ball a while ago. Driving and trying to back in for position. That was Lane. Lane will reset the offense again. 70 seconds left in the first quarter. Coming out high, that was Schaefer with the ball. They lob in the paint. That's Gamble with the ball as the Hunters come up with a steal. Who are we going to call that one on? 21. 21, 21 Isaiah Washington. I was going to say, he's getting busy with his hands. Yeah, well, that's a tough call on him. Yeah, it is. I maybe we would have called that one on 20. Yeah. Don't know about 21. Hall's ball from the right base. The ball is kicked on the inbounds. Even though he actually didn't kick it, he being Caleb Woodward, the ball was thrown on yeah. his foot. That's right. You got to intensely kick the ball to get that call. That's right. Entry pass. Gamble over on the wing. That's Lane, Lane back, gave it up, got it back. Looks out the top of the key to Schaefer. Schaefer in the absence of Gamble this season, the player of the year in District 4. Would that have happened if Gamble had been healthy? Huh? Maybe, maybe not. Pass inside Gamble. Uh, a short jumper over a couple of Highlanders, and Gamble has six points to tie up the game at 12 all. He lays that basketball out there five foot away and drops it in just the same as we would reach some up on a shelf, you know. Highlander ball, clock at 20 seconds. We're tied 12 all. Gray Todd with the basketball. Defensively, that's Schaefer on him, man to man. A little hand back it goes to Babb. Sky dribbles, top of the key, has a screen. Wants to drive around two defenders. As he drives in, he gave up the basketball and then Sitting there to draw the foul was Ethan Schaefer. So Sky picks That's up the foul. Sky bad. It's first, team third. Third team foul on the Highlanders. Three seconds to go. Halls needing to go from in their bench all the way to their front court. Up the sideline, knocked away by good play. Bad. Keeps himself, throws it up ahead of the glass. Couldn't get the foul, couldn't get the shot, but a good defensive effort. After one quarter of play, it's Highlanders 12. The Hall's Red Devils 12, we'll return after the break. Good. Just commenting and in the first half, and knock on wood. Hunters three for three at the foul line. Really good first quarter, uh, especially on the defensive end. I think so. The offensive end probably wasn't anything right at home about, but it's not going to be. With the height and the length and athleticism that they got, it's going to be an ugly game. And we saw that with Clinton the other night. You See, just, just got to play really good defense and so far we've done that. You know, our big guys, all they can do is just stand firm, not let them get between, get through them to the goal, make them go over you. I don't like this. I'm looking down there and the fish are coming over to, to tell Coach A, give him a sign, you know, like your players are mouthing too much. He waited after the timeout. Our kids are already back out on the court. So Coach A really could not address that. Second quarter from Clinton High School in the boys' District A semifinal matchup for third place. It's not a semifinal, it's a consolation game for third place. The pull-up jumper off the right wing, just, that's Elijah Elliott. He has six Elliott. points. Hall's back on top, 14-12. Brady Strunk back on the floor along with Gray Todd, Caleb Woodward, Isaiah Washam, and Scott Jeffries. Woodward has the ball out on the wing to Strunk, top of the key over to Todd. Todd on the right wing. Little quick pass, it went to Strunk. 
Highlanders running a little three player. Uh, weave on the outside, and then Isaiah Washington with the ball handling five skills seconds. says, huh, we give you five second call. Got to break that five second count. You can hold it for five seconds. You can dribble it for five seconds. You can hold it for five more seconds as long as that defensive player is out on top of you. From the foul line, looking for room. That Schaefer dives in. A little floater off the right side. Seven minutes, clock running in the first half. Jeffers with a basketball. Tries to work his way in, picks up the dribble. That's Todd with it. Drives inside the foul line, the floater yeah. off the glass. It stays in for Gray Todd. Gray Todd. Mm. And quickly the other way, big drive to the basket. And that was Caden Stanton. Caden Stanton. And we just got beat that time. Yeah, they just got down the floor fast. Back to a four-point advantage for Halls. Scott tries to drive, picks up the dribble, and needs help. Bounce pass outside, deflected away. Schaefer got a hand on it to knock it away from Isaiah Washington that time. Six minutes, 18 seconds left in the first half. Halls man to man. Brady Strunk will inbound at the end of the, well, Nope, they're going to move him down in front of the coach's box at the Hall sideline. <laughs> Hand back, it goes to Todd. Down in the right corner, Washington might have walked with it. He loses a pass, it goes to Gray Todd. He'll drive inside, got his own rebound. Needs help, forces it back yeah. up and draws the foul. Good job, stay with it though. A lot of He really did. There. The foul will be on Ben Thomas. Also ben Thomas hits first, take fourth. Great time, shooting two. This one is good. Right now with three points, Highlanders trailing by three points. Great eyes of Mark for his second. Throw this one up, this one. Yes. yes. Good roll on that one. So the Rams over here don't completely hate us, do they? No. <laughs> five of five, I think, from the line so far. Exactly. There you go. And oh. Scott almost comes up with a steal. Couldn't handle it as jumping over in front of him was Gabe Holmes. I think this could be the one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Ninth player that Halls has used in the game tonight. Coach Zayden recognized Look he had to go it. into his bench as played seven. And Foul inside, offensive foul. I was watching the high screen. I thought that so might be Thomas illegal. And uh, then the underneath guy called yeah. an illegal screen down low. So yeah. they had a lot of movement going on. The foul was on Ben Thomas. I've got him with two personal fouls. Highlander ball. Garrett will inbound to Jeffers. Now Hall's coming into the backcourt. They're going to play a 1-2-2 two, two, or a 2-2-1 two, two, full court tra trap press. Push from that behind. should be a foul. Yep. Oh, no. He got shoved into that step. Yeah, that's not a good call. And the, the official that was right there on wrong, top of yeah. it, what should have made the call? The yeah. other guy made the call. Holmes with a basketball setting up the Hall's offense from the foul line. They kick it back in the right corner. That pass almost deflected, going low inside. The soft jumper off the baseline. Hey, Stanton from Dave Holmes. Four-point lead for Clinton once again. 20 to 16 over the Howlers. Into the front court. It's Garrett. Fell down, tries to get the ball away. Does to Todd. He needs help. Shoves it back to Washington. He'll try a three. Shot no good. Rebound. Halls. They have a two on, sorry, actually a three on two fast break. Ball back outside Holmes. Working along the baseline. The shuffle driving in. Howlers defend. Getting the ball that was Stanton and his shot was no good. Draws the foul, however. You got to say one thing. Our guys are playing pretty high energy still, though. Fourth team foul against the Highlands. It comes with four minutes, 48 seconds to go in the first half. Caden Stanton, first free throws of the game for the Halls Devils.
21-16 Halls with the advantage. Stanton, second toss, short, rebound Brady Strunk. Scott crosses midcourt with a basketball. We're setting our offense up, coming to midcourt that was bad, but a little handoff goes to Jeffers, now to Todd. Reverses, drives in the paint, runs over Stanton. Is it a block? Is it a charge? What is it? It's oh. The foul says to Gray Todd, the official on the baseline says it's an offensive charge. What do you guys think the official on the far side, was he going to say block or charge? I think he was going to call block. Yeah, I think if they'd have been in agreement, he would have, he would have made a call. Oh, man, that's a tough break. Five-point lead for Halls. They have the basketball. Four minutes, 20 seconds left first half. Gabe Holmes with the ball. Tries to split the Highlander zone. Tied up right there. Good job. And three-second violation, Halls. I like they to call see. That on Elliott. Yeah, I like to see the three seconds called. That's a couple of those we've seen yeah. tonight. Halls with their pressure. They allow the Highlanders to get the ball in bounds. Ahead, left side. Oh. Ray Todd, and he wants to throw the ball to Toby Garrett and overthrew everything. Some juice on that ball. It, it had a little steam. The official coming to the scorer's table, the official scorer. I think they got a question about who the charge was on, and it should have been on Gray Todd. Um, I'm not sure who they called it on on the floor. I think they're going to maybe say they called it on Brady. I think they are because he held three up. We're going to ask this one. We still don't know. They're was, going to convene. <laughs> we don't have a replay of that, but it was definitely on 24 and not three. Ought to be a law. They have to tell us. They, they're doing the NCAA tournament <laughs> for coverage, don't they? Well, they'd have to run all the way up here and tell us. We're not, we don't have the luxury of being courtside. A little exercise wouldn't hurt the officials. <laughs> they could designate the... <laughs> The runner before every game. Running the motion offense, Hunters have gone back into a man-to-man. -man. From the top of the key, they get Gamble out high. He gives up a basketball. Lane, and they go inside. Gamble with a miss, rebound by Garrett. The Hollers have a chance to cut it to three or less with this trip. Jeffers, bounce pass to Babb, picks up the dribble. From the foul line, Brady Strunk wants to spin, working Ooh. against Gamble, and Gamble read the spin real well as he actually blocked the shot by Brady. He's got such more length and height than, than the boss has got. He just laid back and waited for the ball to go up. He's got more height and length than anybody on that mm, sky yeah. high team has <laughs> got by a long shot. Put Scott on Strunk top. again with the ball. Back to Babb. Quick pass went. It was deflected back to Babb. He couldn't get it to go. Straight up. Brady Strunk tries to go up with the ball. He's tied up. Jump ball. Should and be the possession right. arrow will stay with the Highlanders. Yeah, he should have went straight back up yeah, with that a little more quickly. Jeffers will trigger for the Highlanders. 3.08 left. First half. Scott trying to get the ball in, does to the left corner. Isaiah Warsham squares himself, shoots the three, shot no good. Rebound, Taylor Gamble. Halls with the basketball, pushing it quickly up the front. Left side is Lane as Brady goes in the court in, in front of Gamble to get the steal. There's a foul call, and I'm assuming on Brady Strunk. Yeah, it's going to be on the ball. Three, Brady Strunk in second, King sixth. Two fouls on Brady. Waiting at the scorer's table to check in will be Caleb Woodward. Again, the official talking about something with the scorer's table. And he says Caleb can come on in. I think Brady is. He's hot on that one foul. Yeah. He's, I think he told the official, I didn't do it. I thought we'd already had this discussion yes. once and cleared it up, did we not? We were clear. 
Two minutes, 56 seconds to go in the first half. Coming up at halftime, our Vantage Financial halftime summary. We At halftime, we will try to get scores going on around other district tournaments brought to you by Helenwood Foods. Bounce pass into Gamble. Lane has it, driving in. Sky Babb forced the pass to come back outside. Jake Lane setting up the offense. Two minutes, 42 seconds left in the first half. Hollers going man to man. Lane drives against two defenders. Washington almost with a steal. And then Lane throws it away, picked up by Jeffers at midcourt. Bounce pass to Sky Babb. Handles it back to yeah. Jeffers. Nice ball movement. Nice ball movement. We almost fumbled it twice, but nice ball movement. The other way, Clinton drives in. Offensive foul. Oh, big as Scott Jeffers got right in front of Lane that time. That started with Scott Jeffers getting his hands on the ball. Lane got yeah, frustrated yeah. and pushed him off. Good yeah. job Lane, defensively. It's actually Caleb yeah, Schaefer. Yeah, Schaefer. That's just good defense for Scott Jeffers. 21-18. It's a three-point game. Highlanders trailing by three. They can make it two or possibly tie this trip down. A low-scoring second quarter, to me anyway. Long skip pass over on the right wing. That's Gary with the ball. Goes inside to Wilbur. Deflected away from him. Hall's wanting to push the ball. Quick pass goes in the paint. Deflected back out. Hall's with the save. Again, they reverse it. That's Lane driving off the right corner. The jumper all on the baseline. Won't go. Garrett the rebound. Hollers push it with Washington, left side. Uh -oh. His pass comes back outside to Garrett. Now Jeffers will come out and handle the basketball for the Highlanders. Down to Garrett on the left wing. The Jeffers steps back, gave it to Garrett. Thought about the three and said back to Bad. They go into Woodward from the high post. Outside Washington. Picks up his dribble to Bad. Sky wants to drive down to the baseline, forces a jumper up. It's no good. Pushing the ball out, Grayson Bishop. Bishop gives it off the left wing, long three there, Caleb Schaefer. One minute left in this half. Hunters find themselves down by six now. Woodward with the ball. Took, looks like a hand to the face right there. The referee doesn't stop play. Hall's in the front court. Trying to find room, that's Elliott. Comes back outside, Schaefer. His second three in a row. We cannot let him get on track. We've gone from three down to nine down. As Gray Todd waits at the scorer's table to come in. <laughs> I don't think he'll get in this half. Garrett outside over to Washington. Washington on the right wing. Tries to spin around his defender. Did you see the hand in there yeah, by the defender? Yeah. And coming over with the help defense, Taylor Gamble picks up the personal foul. Isaiah will shoot two, and so I'm wrong. That's Gray Todd. That little flurry made the scoreboard look way different than it did 30 seconds Yeah, ago. it's not been a good final minute of the no. half for us at all. Uh, just left them open for a couple of shots, and they're that good. Just that quick, it goes from three to nine. First free throw by Washington is no good. First one we've missed in the half. And now Todd back in for Woodward. 18 seconds remaining in the half. Hall's 27, Highlanders 18. Isaiah Washington. For his second foul shot. This one up, no good. Hall's pushing up the right side. They'll slow it down as Elliott picks the ball back outside. Lane, Lane oh. is then fouled by Isaiah Washington. Isaiah's second personal foul. Going to the line, one and one. Number 41, Isaiah, Isaiah has got some really quick Inside. hands. Sometimes his body not, not quite in time with the hands, though. Jake Lane, one plus. This one no good, rebound. Pushing it, this will be Todd, six seconds. Ahead it goes to Washington, turns, squares the three, no good. And oh, a no. Late foul coming in, Sky Babb picking up his second personal foul. And so that long walk the other way. We'll put Elijah Elliott at the line one plus. At the line from one one for the Red Devils, number 14, 
27 to 18. The first toss good. Make it 28 to 18. 10 point advantage for Halls. Second toss, this one up, no good. Long rebound, Garrett. And there's a foul. Um, picky, yeah, picky. 22, I guess. I guess turnabout's fair play. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> well, with eight tenths left on the clock, I don't, that's enough time to foul, I guess, after these. Toby Garrett will go to the line for the Highlanders. It's one and one for Toby. Toby Garrett at the line for the one and one. Come on, Toby. Get us off that 18. First free throw up, no good. Rebound and the buzzer. After two quarters of play in this boys' consolation game, it's the Halls Devils leading our Scott Highlanders 28 to 18. 28 18, our halftime score. Let's step aside for these messages. When we come back, our Vantage Financial halftime, and we've got a lot to go over in halftime, and we'll get to that after these messages. As we come back to the boys' consolation game in the District 4 AAA tournament at Clinton High School, right now at halftime in this game, it's the Halls Red Devils leading our Highlanders 28-18. to The boys got off to a slow start. We work our way back. Uh, we actually trail at one point, I think, 10-4, to trailing by six, our largest deficit in the first quarter. We tie. Actually had a chance to lead at the end of the first quarter. And then the Red Devils, they come back outscoring the Highlanders by 10 in the second quarter, 16 to 6. Now that's the way we stand here at halftime. A 10-point deficit, Highlanders 28 to 18. And I'd like to say that in some respects, I don't think the Highlanders played that badly. Uh, on the other side of the fence, however, I can say that we didn't seem fluid offensively. What I was sitting here thinking with about a minute and a half to go in the first half is it's by far the best basketball we've seen this team play, yeah. and yet they're very much in the game. Now, you look at it now and it's double digits, and maybe you don't think that uh, in a low-scoring game like this, 10 points is a huge deficit. But, you know, they had the lead late in the first quarter, kind of at the end of the first quarter. It was, what, three-point game, I think, mm -hmm. with a minute and a half to play. Yeah. Uh, did a good job sticking around. Did a really good job against those big post players inside, I thought, at least after the first couple minutes of the game. But offensively, it's been a struggle. It has been a struggle. And you mentioned those big guys inside. For our post guys, they're having to expend way more energy tonight than on a, a normal night. Mm -hmm. You know, it just takes so much. You're constantly trying to move to front them, to get behind them, to – cut off the passing lane and and I wondered about that too as that first half was progressing because coach Yaden is using his usual seven man rotation yep. uh, which is sometimes he only uses six yep. he use, he's using seven tonight on the other side and halls is they just been shuttling people in and out yeah, so it'll be, be interesting to see what happens in the second half as far as energy goes uh, halls picking up the final seven points of the first half as they lead 28 to 13 let's take a quick timeout right here Ben when we come back in uh, first half scoring, and Ben's got some scores around the area. We'll look at this when we return. Quickly, the first half scoring summary, we start with Halls. Caleb Schaefer with eight points. Six of those eight came near the end of the first half as he had two three-pointers back-to-back. Elijah Elliott with seven points. Caden Stanton with five points. Evan Workman with two points. And uh, Taylor Gamble with six points, 28 points, two made three-point shots, two for five at the foul line for the Highlanders. Scott Jeffers, four points. Brady Strunk did not score. Sky Babb, one for one at the line, five points. Toby Garrett, 0 for two at the line. Uh, Gray Todd, four points, two for two at the line. Caleb Woodward, two points, two for two at the line. Isaiah Washam, three points on a made three-pointer, the only made three of the first half by the Highlanders, 0 for two at the foul line, 18 points. Five of nine at the foul line for the Highlanders. And for Helenwood Foods, we've got information and we've got scores. Yeah, Helenwood Foods this week has got two liters of RC Cola. RC. RC, 99 Ooh. cents I for bet a two if you liter. Look, you'll find some moon and, pies uh, or something. And I knew you was going to make a moon pie <laughs> comment, Harris. <laughs> you old timers. 
Uh, hey, hey, you can also get uh, New York strip steak and ribeye steak this week for nine ninety nine a pound. All right, everything is girls tonight. Not many boys games being played. Most districts play their boys games tomorrow night. We can tell you that uh, way up in Upper East Tennessee has no impact on us. Could have a little bit of an impact on Oneida down the road. Cloudland defeats you make it tonight, 48-46. to 46. Up at Oneida in the consolation game in overtime, Wartburg getting an upset win over Sunbright. The final score, I don't know if it's an upset. Wartburg was a higher seed in the regular season. But anyway, 54-51, to 51, Wartburg with the win over Sunbright tonight. Uh, Meigs County falls to Men Central, 66-26. to 26. It's Kingston defeating Teleco Plains, 64-44. Campbell County defeats Powell 55 to 47, and uh, it was Oakdale in a low-scoring game over Greenback 29 to 21. Of course, our game earlier tonight it was our Scott Lady Highlanders falling to Anderson County 53 to 37, and unfortunately we do not have a score. Seymour Northview. Seymour Northview Academy. That's yeah, one that's on. one one. Yeah. Yeah, that's the one that we really wanted. Yeah, and they played a consolation game between Carter and Gibbs at six. Now, that doesn't impact us. It doesn't impact some of our district opponents. We've not gotten a score running on that one either. Hmm. Playing it close to the vest over there. Conspiracy there. Anyway, we're back on the court. The teams are ready to start the second half. Hunter Basket will be down below our our broadcast position. Uh, Basket to our left. Hall's basket to our right in the second half. Hollers needing to come out, and I think the first four minutes they need to make, I don't want to say a splash, but they've got to dominate the first four minutes. Yeah, yeah a un- couple of quick scores would be a good thing. Unfortunate that that last 90 seconds happened because yeah. if it's a three-point game right now, you feel a whole lot different about it. But, you know, while it hadn't been as bad as it has been for the girls, our boys have really struggled to shoot the ball in this tournament as well. We got that one three in the first half, and that's it. Man, usually Sky Babb and Gray Todd would have four or five threes combined yes. between them. The by thing now. here tonight in the first half, our guys have not been able to get any point blank points. Uh, I mean, you go into the lane and there's somebody there, ain't going to let you get the ball up. A good shot. Yeah, Hall's with a couple of good inside defenders. Of course, it starts with Taylor Gamble and also Elliott inside. So they, they can defend because they got some length. <laughs> oh, they got a lot of length. Halls will have the possession first. Hollers in a 2-3 zone to open the second half. Brady Strunk, Caleb Woodward, uh, Gray Todd, Sky Babb, and Scott Jeffers. As we say that, there's going to be a foul down inside. The Hollers, Strunk, and Woodward double team gamble, but they call a foul on Caleb Woodward. That'll be two on Caleb. First Highlander team foul. All will inbound baseline left side. Quick pass goes inside. They work it back out, and we set up their offense on the perimeter. Lane gave up, she gave up the ball to Elliott. Now over to Schaefer. Back to Lane once again. Loose, sort of a loosey-goosey pass out there. There you go, Ball. staying with it. Straight Ray in there. Skunk goes straight up and draws a foul from Caleb Ooh. Schaefer. Come on, Ball. She'll be all right. And he really banged his head right there yeah, on that goal support. It's padded, and he's got a hard head. Now, I'm going to tell you that. But you worry about a neck injury in yeah. that situation. Underneath that structure, it's steel. Brady Strunk will have two opportunities for the Highlanders. We trail by 10. Brady Strunk, shooting two. With, with two makes, he can cut it to eight. Sounds better than a 10 point deficit. First toss, good. Yeah, one. yeah, he wasn't hurt. He's okay. Just, might, need, just needed to be jostled up. He needed up, a, he? a tune up. <laughs> oh, that's a lane, lane violation. Hey. And Brady makes it anyway. Doesn't have to worry about the lane violation. Scott Jeffers steps in in midcourt. Looks like we had to steal not only once, but twice. Scott comes up with it, diving for the layup. Yeah. Here it's Scott Jeffers. We get a little double it's team action at midcourt. Good ass. Four going quick on. points. Lobbing ahead. Watch over here. This is Bishop with the ball. They kick it back out in the right corner to Schaefer. His shot no good. Got to be over the back. That's what the Highlander fans want. But you anyway. got one official pointing that way and one pointing this way. He overrules. Last touched as the ball went out of bounds by Taylor Gamble. 
You know what? I like that no call. I think if you don't put your butt in somebody, yeah. you know, you don't have a reason to complain. At least that's what I tell my son. <laughs> Front court for the Highlanders setting up their offense. Brady Strunk, bounce pass, right corner, Sky Babb, his three comes up short, and a push. Oh, my goodness. That's a tough it's on call. It's number five. I think they're going to call that on. Uh, they're going to call that on Caleb Woodward. I guess so, since he's retreating. Yeah, that's a tough call. Yeah. Third on Caleb. Here comes that full court pressure by the Highlanders once again. Bounce pass to the near side. That's Elliot with the ball. Dribbles into a double team. The lob ahead. It goes. To Gamble, he drops oh, hand and Caleb Woodard. That's a nice block there. A dangerous block too, but yeah, a good play. Was. Good it play. Was. Not afraid to say, hey, I can't be out on the floor and not play hard. That's so. right. Got to leave it on the line. Lane, the long pass out top of the key. That's Schaefer. Schaefer with the ball. He's got a high screen out here by Gamble. Couldn't use it. Gives up the basketball. Scott Jeffers coming out. He's forcing some pretty bad dribbles out there. Going up, that's Gamble. Got the rebound and with the left hand, stuck that one back in. Gamble's eighth point. Back here, back here, down here. Ray Ooh. Todd has an opening, had a great screen. Uh, that, is a, uh, uh, that is a foul against Caleb Woodward. He just could not help himself. No, that's. You can't do that. That's just that's no, a frustration that, foul, but you cannot do that. It hurts your whole team it does. when you do that. It does. I mean, that's two points you take off the board. And that's four fouls that you And he's already got away with a couple of them. Left side. Driven again in the three Highlanders and Scott Jeffers. What about the, the dribble Scott there. Jeffers. Allen pass comes ahead. Gray Todd needs help. Throws it back behind him. It goes to Garrett. A little ball handling there. Drives it in. <laughs> And the shot no good, but the foul. So Toby Garrett goes back to the line. We so got away with an over and back right there. Yeah. I'll disagree on that one. <laughs> I sure hope Toby feels like Toby hitting Garrett. a couple of You guys are watching throws. this black line right here. I was watching this orange line right there. Toby Garrett, 4-2. The first is no good. Halls 30, Highlanders 22. Five minutes, 43 seconds left. Third quarter. Garrett with his second toss. That one is good. Seven-point deficit for the Highlanders. We can get another takeaway right here. We suddenly can make it a four-point game maybe. Long cross-court pass. Needing help, bouncing into the corner, and we've got an offensive, offensive foul. Yeah. They call that one on Gamble for hooking. Uh, they're being consistent. They actually they call said, that on 22. 22. I didn't okay. even see him down there. Didn't either. But anyway, they have, I mean, those calls have gone both ways. Trying to get the ball in. It's deflected, picked up a bab in the backcourt. He needs help. To top, ahead to Jeffers, two on one. Brady Strunk drives in. Up yeah. off the glass field, Brady Strunk. Scott Jeffers with the assist. Brady Strunk from Scott Jeffers. Brady's first made field goal of the game. It's a five-point deficit now, 30-25. Halls with the advantage. Again, the Highlander defense trying to pick up another takeaway. The jumper out on the wing is no good, fighting for the rebound. Mm. Yep, they say Gray Todd knocked it out, out of bounds. I was waiting to see if they were going to signal a foul on that. Well, in Brady's defense, he, it's kind of like carrying a full bucket, a five-gallon bucket up a lemmy old tree, you know, <laughs> without spilling the drop. <laughs> Rain to inbounds the basketball comes in quickly. Gamble just rolls it up over the front iron. Push it Gamble on. with 10 points Push for it the on. game. Gets the pressure. Hunter's sort of going backwards. We need they're to go counting, forward. They're counting, fellows. They're counting. Garrett and couldn't get the ball across midcourt in time. Well, see, Scott had the ball on this side right here, and he threw it backwards. Yeah. In the, pre in the press, you really don't want to go back with yeah, a basketball. you want to go to your goal. Easy to say setting up here, though. <laughs> yes, it is. That's Bishop with the ball. We've got a foul. Timeout. And we've got a timeout. No, they called the foul. No. He's, he's signaling where they've got to throw the ball at. 
Okay. That's three on Brady. Jill, it, we had them down, had it to six, and gave up an offensive rebound they scored on. And we had it to five and gave enough an, an offensive rebound. Just so close to getting back in this game. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Just it a few still, little things. It's still just seven points with four, yeah, it, over four and a half to go in the third. Definitely not out of reach. Just uh, got to keep the intensity up. Halls with the basketball. They lob it into the backcourt. Four and a half minutes to go. Jake Lane with the ball, guarded by Scott Jeffers. Gives it up deep on the left side, Elliott. Back outside, Gamble. Look out. Off free of his player, tosses it back behind him to Lane. Lane's three is no Lee good. Scotty. Scott Jeffers boxed out real well. And that was Lane, or excuse me, Gamble knocking the ball away from behind. Possession staying with the Highlanders, and we've done a really good job of beating the press, and this time, Halls will back out. They'll go half court man to man. Jeffers dribbles to the left wing. Todd from the top of the key wants to drive. Comes back outside Strunk. He loads a three. Oh. Comes up short and goes out of bounds. I think Brady almost as soon as he shot that said. He knew it was shot. Wait a minute. That's not my shot. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not taking but two of them all year. <laughs> Halls with their offense. I understand the man to man D from the left side, that, excuse me, right side, that's Elliott. Elliott back outside Gamble, kicking it over to Schaefer. Gamble cuts down the paint. The shot was no good. Ray Todd picks oh. it up and he did travel him. Yeah. Yep. I don't think, I think he wanted to go maybe to Sky, but I don't think Sky had his head around to see it. Sub in. As Isaiah Washington replaces Todd, he joins Todd, Babb, uh, no, Todd's out. He joins uh, Garrett, Washington, Strunk, and Babb, and Jeffers. So there we go. That's the five. Picking up the dribble. Gamble has the ball outside. Gives it up right side to Lane. He'll drive in against two defenders. Shot was no good. And over the back, yes. Yep. Uh, that one this time has to be against him. Yep. I agree with the Hall's coach. That's a tough call. It was. Well, but we'll take it. Of course we will. <laughs> I'm not going to say I wouldn't have made that call. <laughs> that makes up for the travel they caught on Greg. Yeah. yeah. No, that's not. It probably was the right call on the travel as well. 32-25, Hall's seven-point advantage. Highlanders with the basketball trying to cut into that Hall's lead. Jeffers outside. Hall staying man to man. Jeffers kicks it to Babb, right wing. Looks for somebody to give the ball to. We're a little stagnant on our offense. Jeffers outside, moving players around. Strunk comes outside, couldn't get the ball to him. Now does to Washington deep on the right wing. Back to Garrett from the top of the key over to Babb. Might have passed on the three. Back to Garrett, his long three. Ooh. Spins out, no good. Oh, oh, oh. Might have walked with it, but that's Campbell. Driving down the court, going in strong, drawing the foul from Garrett. Now, y'all still going to tell me that there ain't a walk, no. right? When, oh, that was a good move. When they take like good three move. steps That's and go, steps. Thir go 30 foot. Well, it's, actually, it's your eyes deceiving you. When he takes that sideways step, you think that's two steps instead of one. Okay. Actually, I think there was two walks by Gamble. One was way down here <laughs> when it first started. Because when he jumped over a player that was on the floor, that was a walk. Gamble's first free throw is good. All I know is Coach Yaden probably has to be pleased with the defensive effort. Yes. But offensively, yes. we can't throw it in the ocean for a second consecutive That's game. Right. Fourth consecutive game in this gym if you count the girls' games. Let's let's go to Anderson County, Halls. Let's go anywhere next year. Gamble's yeah. second toss is no good. The Highlanders tip and control the rebound. Scott Jeffries with the ball. Two minutes, 20 seconds left third quarter. It's 33-25, just an eight-point advantage. All it takes is a couple of possessions, and this game is pretty close to tied. There comes Gray Todd. Oh. Jump ball. Possession there is staying with the Highlanders. I did not see that one, but that's okay. I'll be truthful. I didn't know what he was going to call. I was expecting a walk. But. Harris thought it was a Euro step. No, that was a, that was a foul. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean – I really thought, you know, well, that's what you I call except I a walk there. Those year old people fall down the same as we do in Ellenwood, you know. 
Sub coming in for Halls, that'll be Caden Stanton, number 42, replacing Gamble. That's what it is, isn't it? You are jealous that that Euro step wasn't invented in some playground in Hellwood, right? No, no, don't bother me a bit. Well, actually, we did invent one in Hellwood. I'll tell you about it sometime. Hollander ball. Todd drives off the left wing. Strong to yeah. the basket off the glass. Good, Good. Should have been a foul. Yeah. You know, basket plus foul was not, but we needed that score. 33-27. We just need a stop, guys, a stop. This is with a basketball in the paint, a little floater driving in Ben Thomas. That's unfair. There is no way that would have gone down for us. That is unfair. <laughs> I agree with that. I think because their eye level is higher, <laughs> they can look at it better. Todd has a basketball. Spun to the foul line. Tosses back outside deep on the left wing. This will be Garrett. Back to Todd. Scott Jeffers doing a lot of work and now just has to come back out and handle the basketball. Gives it to Garrett. Garrett looking inside for a stunt. The ball knocked out of bounds. Hall. He just about waited a little bit too long. Come on, boy. Jeffers to inbound, baseline left side. Isaiah Warsham on the fourth for the Highlanders. He'll have the ball in the left corner. Back to Todd. Outside the key. He wants to drive, cut off. The ball's deflected. The steal, that's Holmes going. It's Base Jeffers Scott catches it up. Job, I think Scott Holmes Jeff. kicked yeah. it. Yes. Good Good effort. Effort, Scott. Pure effort. Scott Babb going to come in and give Scott a break maybe for 63 seconds here. Guys, we talked about the fatigue issue, and I think it's starting to set in for our guys. Yeah, I think so. That's the first break that uh, – Scott's had, I think he played all the minutes in the first half and all but one minute here in the third quarter. Todd with the basketball. Wants to drive around Stanton, go strong. There you go. Lays it off the glass. Got a nice mis mismatch that we can exploit. Timeout taken by Halls. We'll take the timeout with the two teams. This is a First National Banking game timeout. 35-29, Halls with the lead. Taking a look at the scoreboard, 39 seconds remaining in the third quarter. Halls, 35, our Scott Highlanders, 29. As we come back from the Halls timeout, it is their basketball needing to go the length of the court. The Highlanders will come from the timeout in a full court man-to-man. -man. Entry pass comes in. Elliott gave it up to Holmes. Holmes ahead midcourt. Oh, look out. Thomas and oh, oh Gray right Todd. Gray. Once he that came from about 15 feet away to in my highly book, re eject that. I'm going to mark that as my Ooh. play of the game. <laughs> you got hey. a better one? Hey, no, I don't. Not so far. <laughs> That's worth three points right there, isn't it? Gray Todd wants to win this game. Yeah, he does. Inbounds pass to Stanton. Stanton needs some help. Driving in Ooh. and Todd. No, no it wasn't no, Todd. It was Brady Strunk. From behind, picking up the foul. I've got Brady with Should be four. four. Well, I like that Thank guy that. better. Yeah. He's yes. got better math than he, you do. His, his math, pencil is true. And, and that goes back to the first half when they could not figure out who the foul was on, I think. Gabe Holmes to shoot two tosses. The first is no good. And so the foul pays have, off. He may have fouled the right one. You know, if – Regardless of whether they hit this one or not, you got a chance to make it a two-possession game going to fourth quarter. Watch the block out Holmes action with here. the no. toss. That one would not rim out for him, so it's now 36-29. Hollander ball in the backcourt. Babb gave oh. it up to Strunk. We need help. Double dribble. Strunk puts it on the oh. floor. Timeout taken by Coach Yaden. Let's join the teams quickly with this break. 17 seconds to go. Halls 36, Highlanders 29. Basketball, Highlander basketball coming to you live from Clinton High School, the District 4 AAA Tournament. This is the boys' consolation game with 17 seconds to go in the third quarter. Halls has a 36-29 lead over our Highlanders. Jeffers with the basketball. Dribbles, the handback goes to Babb. He's cut off. Somehow forces his way yeah. around. 
No continuation, and we got a few come on rest from the Highlander <laughs> fans up here. As if I was on Gabe yeah, Holmes. You don't often hear a come on ref whenever they call the foul on the other team, that, right? That, that was a year old thing down there. That? Sure. No. Well, it was not a year old. <laughs> that was just to split the defender okay. and go to the hole. Okay. Five and a half seconds to go in the third <laughs> that, quarter. Highlander's a chance Australian for an inbounds arc. play. An they free up Jeffers out on the right wing. Scott? Four seconds. Gets it back seconds. to Todd. Todd running jumper off the glass. Oh, man, that was close to going in on the – coming off the board. 36-29 after three quarters in the boys' consolation game. We'll take this break and be back for, I think, a very exciting fourth quarter. This. Welcome back to tournament action on the IH Sports Network. Greg Bond sitting out there somewhere in uh, Broadcast Central, putting this game out on uh, Comcast, channel 190 or 191. You just have to check to see which one it's on. Of course, it's on YouTube and Facebook Live, the IH Sports Network. H.L. Keaton, Ben Garrett, Cameron uh, Parker, and myself, Rick Keaton, here at uh, Clinton for the final eight minutes in this boys' consolation game. Our Highlanders outscored Clinton 11 to 8 in the third quarter. Got it from 10 to 7. Yeah. Had so many chances to get closer than that. Yes. I mean, it so close. I think I said that so earlier. Close. Just so close. If the ball bounces a different way a time or two, this is a different game. Now we're right on the bubble of teams starting to shoot the bonus shots on fouls, too. We just need a couple of three point shots. We do. Mm -hmm. Three points, yeah. They're defending well against our three point shooters. Each team with 16 fouls. Hollers man-to-man -man coming out in the fourth quarter. Inside it goes to Gamble. Oh, blocked. Yeah. Either Gray Todd from behind or Brady Strunk from in front. I that think was a combination there. Scott has really done a good job on him tonight. Scott picks up the dribble. Bounce pass as Strunk comes out on the right wing. Inside it goes to Gray Todd. Oh, Turns yeah. around. That shot Come blocked. In. Batted around. Halls comes up with it. They'll push it up the left side with Holmes. Back outside, long three is no good. Two Highlanders, five four. Brady Strunk, the rebound. Sky Babb already in the front court up the left side. Needs help. Back outside to Jeffers. Scott over to Strunk. Back it comes to Todd. Todd drives down along the baseline, flushes it back outside. Strunk with a basketball over to Babb. Left it for Strunk once again. Needs somebody to come handle the ball. That'll be Jeffers. 6.50 to go in the fourth quarter. 36-29 Halls with the lead. Hunters can. They've got plenty of time on the clock. They can be, you know, can take their time with Counts the ball. On. Make sure we take good shots and oh, nobody. hope that we can get the rebounds. That shot by Gray was no good. That's Holmes pushing it. Running back door in the layup. Good by Ben Thomas. But the possession's now important as that's a nine-point lead for Hunters. Nice backdoor cut. Oh. The wrap around layup was no good. It's going to be a not really a nice entry pass from Brady Strunk to Sky Babb. And Sky did the right thing, trying to reverse on the backside. Soft, soft, soft turnaround jumper. Campbell. Guys, the last few trips, we're not expending the extra energy to move in to fight for the rebounds. That's why we're getting one shot and it's over. Jeffers has that opening, drives in, draws the foul. Probably, as they step out to call the foul, Thomas, number three. Yes. It's number three, Ben Thomas, his third. Should be at the line, one plus one. This would be Scott Jeffers for the Highlanders. Two things happen here. Clock stops. Scott shooting foul shots. And he was in the act of shooting, so he was going to get two. Yeah. Okay. 40 to 30. Hollers by 10. This one too hard. Still a 10 point game. Hollander defense. Well, we've got five minutes, 40 seconds to play our hearts out here to pick up the number three seed. Might have walked with the ball, the handoff. Losing it, picking it back up outside was Thomas. We get a double team, passes deflected. There you go. 
Ooh. Long pass, go. it goes to Brady Strunk. Tipped it, saved. Back in, it goes to Gray Todd. Now call the offensive foul on Gray Todd. Got to be more under control. You, yeah. you, can't, be. you can't argue that. Tom. No, absolutely not. I'm, and the kid was there and in position for what felt like two or three seconds. Brady Strunk, Gray Todd, Toby Garrett, Sky Babb, Scott Jeffers with the basketball. Halls. Oops, oh, that's fell down. That's got to be a walk. Time out. Well, he maintained his dribble. We'll join the teams during the break. It's a 10-point lead for Halls, 40-30. to 30. We'll take his first National Bank in-game timeout. The final five minutes, eight seconds of this boys' consolation game playing out in front of us. It's a 10-point lead for Halls. Highlander coach Rusty Aiden talking with the five players coming back in the game. Gray Top, Toby Garrett, Brady Strunk, Scott Jeffers, and Sky Babb. See, they're gonna, regardless of how this last 508 plays out, they're gonna look back on this. Uh, you know, there'll be regrets if they don't oh, yeah. win. There'll be things they wish they'd done different, but yeah. you cannot fault the effort tonight. I mean, it has been there. It's been yes. there, yes. You know, that last charge by Gray, that's just a situation where a kid's trying to make a play and wants it to win is. the game. It is. You know, saw Sky Bab miss a layup right before that. He's just trying to make a play. I mean, it's been right there for the taking tonight, just a little bit off. And you've got to go a little bit above and beyond what's normal when you're playing a team like Owls. Collins in a zone right now. It might be a 2-3 or a 1-2-2. Driving off the baseline, the pass flushes out to the right corner. The three there, no good. Rebound gamble, he might have walked with it. Long pass comes back outside. That's Holmes with the jumper yeah. boom. Tell me Dave something. Holmes. Number one there, he's the POY, right? Yeah. Hey, okay, we've shut him down pretty much tonight. Playing well. That's a shot. Yeah, eight yes. first half points, hadn't scored in the second half. Three on the big boy. That's five, on the block, that'll be Tim picking up his third, third personal foul. And like I said earlier, I'm not criticizing anybody. I'm saying if Gamble had been on the floor all year for Halls, would Schaefer have been the player of the year? Yeah. I know coming into this season, a lot of folks thought that number five was their best player. Yeah. yeah. Sky Babb. Well, you watch him play a couple games. He's a pretty good player. He's pretty good. One and one, makes the first, gets the second. It's really unfortunate you hate to see a player miss a, almost an entire season yeah. the way that yes. he did. See a senior this year. No, I, no, I don't think, think he is. I think he's his junior. But they leave us next year anyway. Yeah. Second toss, Sky, also good. 43-32. Hollers again aggressively trying to get the ball away from Halls. That's Lane, kicks it behind him. Driving in, Schaefer dumps it into Gamble. Brady Strunk <laughs> had a hold of his arm for the longest of time before the official finally calls the foul. Yeah, well, really, uh, it wasn't, wasn't the boss's fault. I mean, he took his arm and went off with it. In the NCAA, that's called hooking in something like that. And there's a certain call for that. Going to the line will be Taylor Gamble. He's there one plus one. Gamble's free throw. Oh, he got the roll. 44-32. And certainly the Highlanders, they cannot afford on a missed shot to have Halls be able to sneak in and get the rebound. Strunk comes out with the four personal fouls. Coming in Isaiah Washington and the second free throw good by Gamble. We just got to score the ball. I mean, ever trip. 45-32, yeah, it's very important right now. Offensive trips. Efficiency needs to be first and foremost here. Scott Jeffers tries to force his way in, backing in Gamble. Gamble got the block from behind. Here comes the trap in the midcourt. Scott Jeffers done yeah. everything but hit him with a truck that time to pick up the foul. That's number one, Scott Jeffers. And I don't know if that's the strategy right now but by Coach Aiden to say, hey, let's foul, let's put him at the line, let's see what we can make out of that if we can get him there at the line and they miss. The only thing is you save clock by doing that. Gabe Holmes, 
Ninth team foul against the Highlanders. And I think number four has missed it. Well, he's, you know, he's one for two at the line. Okay. Made so his last one. 50-50. Now he's 60-30. Second toss, Holmes prepared. Those are a big pair of free throws. His Holmes will come out back in Ben Thomas for him. 47-32. Connors have sort of hit the wall at this 30 and 32 point mark right now. Washington, he double oh, dribbled with yep. the ball. Yep, yep. That's, that freshman's going to, I think, be a, a real solid asset to our Highlander team in the next three years. You talk about those freshmen, man. We're going to see a lot of those freshmen mm -hmm. next yeah. year as sophomores. Yeah. yeah. Isaiah will be an every night starter. White Lord will be an every night yes. starter. Maybe Landon Goodman. I mean, we're yeah, going to see a be. bunch of them, yeah. Well, you only got two coming back, uh, two junior sky bad, and oh. Toby Garrett, as I say, that Toby – Auditions for the part and picks up the foul. Has uh, Toby been taking some KRIT classes or something? Because I noticed he went in with a. Team 10. Shooting two for the Red Devils. I'm Elijah Elliott. One of two in the first half at the line. Shooting a double bonus. Tenth team foul on the Highlanders. This toss good. Sometimes it's not how many foul shots as a team you might make in the game. It's at what stage of the game those foul yeah. shots come at. Yeah. And going down the stretch, that's an important and maybe a prolific statement of mine. Well, you give up four points on free throws, two trips, and then a, a three down here being made doesn't make up for it. Babb works his way in the paint. Way. Yes, they'll call it a made basket and that's one. Good work. That's good work. First field goal, second half by Skies. He gets that three-point opportunity. Three minutes, 14 seconds remaining in the game. Skies' foul shot is good. Oh. You got 47 for them or 49? Uh, well, I have, I've Garrett. had 40. I thought I had 49 for a while. And okay. I just forgot to add a couple yeah. then. Well, maybe I just missed it. You know, I get off in my mathematics here. Jake Lane, first of two is good. I noticed you all didn't ask me, you know, how to check my scores or nothing. Right. Listen, the second one by Lane is good. You don't even know what a Euro step is, so we're not going to trust you to do free throws. Oh, math. I know what it is. It's walking with a basketball. <laughs> with that, i got to pull my headset off and scratch my ears. <laughs> oh. Ball stripped away. Alec. All alone driving. Lay up. Yes, good by Jake, Jake Lane. Believe it or not, that's Lane's first field goal of the game. And I thought in the first half he was just scoring at will. He's been a real. Oh. Drive to the right is no good. The tip back from the backside, Toby Garrett. Toby two went Garrett. down on that one. Toby picks up not only the offensive rebound, but the two point bucket. In the front court. Off the oh, baseline, good by Taylor Hamble. I tell you, folks are going to look at this final score, and it is not going to reflect the way this no, game is played. No, no, really not. Outside, Short. Garrett's long three, no good. Rebound. Jeffers trying to pick a pocket, couldn't get the ball. Toss it ahead, and that pass knocked out of bounds along the baseline. That was Washington knocking the ball out of bounds. Subs for Coach Aiden White, Lloyd, number 14, coming in. Number 13, Landon Goodman, and number 15, Tucker Slavin. Substitutions involve Sky Babb, Gray Todd, and Scott Jeffers. Hawks uh, making a big line change. Yep. 
Two minutes remaining in the game. Red Devil basketball, they'll inbound baseline. Left side extended. When Howells empties off their bench, they're putting some pretty good players on the floor. Because he's been playing, what, nine, ten? He's played ten. Now Stanton got the ball back in the paint. His shot no good. Garrett rebound. Goes coast to coast with it. Tosses it behind him to Washam. Outside Goodman. To Garrett once again. Over to Goodman. Has the ball deflected away mm. and then couldn't pick it up. We lose the ball out of bounds. Another sub for the Highlanders checking in. That is Jacob Lau, number 33. We've got only leaves one player on the bench that uh, Coach Aiden will probably get in before the game's over with. Less than 90 seconds to go. Hall's 55. Hollins 37. They'll make it 57 37. Ethan Schaefer from Tracy Yates. Hall's has been able to score. The Highlanders have not. I think that sums up the fourth quarter. The jumper by Washam is no good. Hall's with a rebound. They push it down the court. Down the floor. And reversing layup is no good. Back outside. they will kick it out again. Driving left side this time. No good. Ball's batted around. Control inside as the Highlanders. Jacob Plow gets the rebound. 50 seconds left in the game. Stay tuned after the game for a Danny King Lumber post game. On the Ball to Lloyd and yep, stepped on the line. Last player in. For the Highlanders, that's Logan Phillips, number 35. So Coach Aiden brings 12 players to most games, and all 12 have now played in this boys' consolation game for third place. And Halls will get the third place seed. All alone, oh. just working to the basket. That is Caden Stanton. Yeah, Ben, this score is not going to reflect the kind of game that was played here. No, it was a three possession game until well into the fourth quarter. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Driving that's lowered. Little spin move, left hand. Oh, good job. Oh, I like it. I like those teardrops that way. That was pretty. That was. He handled the ball well for a, a larger human being, kind of. And that's the buzzer and the end of this basketball contest as the Halls Red Devils will defeat. Our Highlanders 59 to 39. We'll talk some about the game during our Danny King Lumber post game. We'll also have our final score. We'll have our first National Bank player and Trophy Master Hustle Award. We've also got out of town scoring brought to you by <coughs> Helenwood Foods. We'll do all that and more. When we return to Clinton in the side of the District 4 AAA tournament. And I guess, well, I said it all. We'll be back. Welcome back to Clinton, the side of the District 4 championship. Tomorrow night, uh, I can tell you if you want to come back and watch uh, basketball tomorrow night, the two championship games. In the girls' championship, it'll be Clinton and Halls. That game starts at 6 o'clock. And in the boys' championship, it's Anderson County against Clinton. Clinton sort of a surprise winner Friday night with the victory over Halls. So it's Anderson County, Clinton boys. That game time approximately 7.30. The girls championship is Clinton Halls at 6 o'clock. So. Uh, Rick, right there, Anderson County, I think, in a way, is a surprise because they were seated what coming into this? Four. Fourth? I mean. No, the Anderson third, County third. the three seed. Three, yeah. okay. So. Yeah. Well, it just goes to show you how close this district was all year it, yeah, long. You know, top to bottom. Close. AC had regular season wins over Clinton and over Halls. Yeah. You know, so Scott did not have a win over Halls, but they took Halls to overtime. They swept AC, had to win over Clinton. It's just a just a really, really divided it, district, it evenly really divided. And we knew it would be coming into the year. And really, that's the best way to go into season, you know. Hey, listen, it's such – I want you to think back to last year, the same district – uh, when when Scott High's playing with Trey Morrow and, and Luke West and Dalton yeah. Pruitt and doesn't get past the region semifinals, yeah. you yeah. know, <laughs> if those kids were here this year, 
and Scott High would have, would have cakewalked to the substate. You would, yeah. You know, and Clint would say the same thing. They'd say if we had our boys from last year, yeah. this year, we would have we would have mm-hmm. made hay out of this district. So yeah. everybody can make that case. But it's just it's been a really weird year. Everybody lost so much from last year. Everybody turned out to be really even. Next year may not be that way. Next year we've got Union County coming in, and they're a really good team. Mm-hmm. Cumberland Gap's coming in. Uh, Anderson County's got everybody back yep. next year except for one kid. So who knows what will happen next year. But, you know, that's what makes high school sports, basketball especially, so interesting. Something that will grab Change, you. Changes year to year. Yeah. Without, yep. without doubt, it changes year to year. Um, as we watch the game tonight, Ben said it a couple of times. It, the game was much closer, much closer than what you can imagine. At the end of the third quarter, as an example, it was just a seven-point differential. Hall's 36, Highlanders 29. From that point on, it went out where the Highlanders only pick up 10 more points to Hall's stretching the lead by 20, 23 points. So we had trouble scoring. Can't fault the defensive effort. Uh, we've just seen a lid over the baskets on these standards on we, the Clinton We court didn't get to the line all that much either, you know. I mean, yeah, well, we shot a few. Well, but when we got there, we couldn't make them. Well, 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 I'm going to – here's <laughs> what a – Calls went to the line 17 times. We went to the line 18 times. I didn't think we shot that many. Yeah. Well, I'm telling you, just boys and girls both, we've been here for four games and sat through this misery – and uh, I, I don't care if I don't see this gym, and it's got nothing to do with the people. Uh, athletic director Rob Stacy's been, he's almost hogtied us and dragged us to the hospitality yeah. room to make yeah. us eat. He's like our grandma. Yeah. And won't let us leave here without eating something. You know, so they've treated us good. So it's got nothing to do with that. But man, the way that our teams have shot the ball over here just couldn't, y'all talked about these standard irons. Just could not make a shot on these. They rims. look the same size around me. <laughs> I, you know, I've not tried to shoot on them. It wouldn't matter what I shoot at if it. Wasn't an extra big hula hoop, I wouldn't have a chance anyway. And we, and we may be playing at one of those gyms that also uses standards on either Friday or Saturday night. That's right. Oh boy. Here, so. That's right. No, listen, and the boys, I thought it came out, uh, I didn't think the girls played particularly well either game they played. The boys, I didn't think, played well against Anderson County. But tonight, man, I was impressed with their effort and their intensity. Uh, they came out tonight wanting to win the game, and they acted like they wanted to win the game. Just couldn't make a shot. We had, what, one three-point shot tonight? Yes. That's, yeah. inc- that's incredible. That's, uh, if And I'm going to tell you, if you talk about the strength of the district. If Halls had had their point guard, if they'd had their big post player inside, if they'd had those two players all year long, don't you think they would have won more than the 16 games coming into the night? You would season? think they Absolutely. would, yeah. Yeah, Halls is a good basketball team. They got surprised a little bit by Clinton, but that just goes back to what we said about the even the, 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 the parity in this district. This is a good Halls basketball team, and I don't know who's going to wind up going to the sub-state. Uh, Carter, obviously, which is probably who we're going to see on Saturday night. I think, think they've got an excellent shot of making yep. it, and, and probably they do. Uh, but who's going to be the other team? It could be uh, could be Clinton. It could be Halls. It could mm-hmm. be AC. It could be, you know, Gibbs or Northview mm-hmm. Academy. Man, it's, it's not just this district that's got a lot of parity. It's the other side, too. Yes, they certainly have. Let's take this break. When we come back, our end-of-the-game scoring summary. We'll have more comments on the game. We've got our part of the game, Hustle Award, and our Helenwood Food Scoreboard. We'll do that from Clinton after these messages. Well, welcome back. Our final segment of our Danny King Lumber post game. Remember uh, Danny King Lumber? Great people, great prices, retail, and wholesale lumber. That's Danny King Lumber, 569 1430. You can find them down at Verdun. Now, uh, let's look at the end of the game scoring summary. We start with the vis- the home team tonight and the winner at the Halls Red Devils. Caleb Schaefer with eight points, two made three-pointers, all points in the first half. Gabe Holmes with six points, three for four at the foul line. They made three-pointer, all his points in the second half. Elijah Elliott with nine points, seven of those in the first half. Ethan Schaefer did not score. Caden Stanton had seven points. Ben Thomas with four points. Evan Workman with two points. Jake Lane with four points. He was two for two at the foul line. And Taylor Gamble finishes with 17 points tonight. The only player, I mean, it sort of surprised me when I was adding up the scores. He was the only player for Halls in double figures tonight. 17 points, three for four at the foul line. All of his foul shots came in the second half. 
He uh, scored six points in the first half and 11 in this, yes, 11 in the second half. 59 points for the Red Devils. They make three three-point shots, so neither team shot or made a lot of those tonight. And in the second half, Hoss 10 of 12 at the foul line. And for the game, 12 makes out of 17 foul shot attempts. Let's move over to the Highlander scoring summary. Scott Jeffers finishes with seven points. He was one of two at the foul line. Brady Strunk with four points. He was two for two. Sky Babb, ten points for the Highlanders, four for four at the foul line. He had five first half points, five second half points. Toby Garrett finishes with three points. He was one of two. Gray Todd finishes with eight points, four in the first half, four in the second half, two for two at the foul line. Caleb Woodward with two points, both at the foul line. Wyatt Lloyd with two points. Isaiah Washington with three points on a made three-point shot in the first half, 0 for 2 at the foul line. Blame and not scoring, Landon Goodman, Tucker Slavin, Jacob Lau, and Logan Phillips, all freshmen who got in in the fourth quarter. It's a 39-point total for the Highlanders. Seven of nine foul shots in the second half for the game. We make 12 of 18 free throws, and by my math, that's 67%. So not a bad night at the foul line, except I would have loved to have got there 20 more times like that. So the Highlanders fall and will be on the road Saturday night. We don't know where yet. We'll know that tomorrow night. But we do know the Highlanders will be playing on the road Saturday night. Game time. All first-round region games are satellite games, and they all start at 7 p.m. local time. So we do know that from a Highlander standpoint. So they'll be on the road, and maybe we'll find out who the girls will be playing here in just a few minutes. Joining us now is Highlander head coach Rusty Yaden. Coach, thanks for coming up as uh, we watch your team fight. Or, and we talked about it. We think fought hard, played hard, uh, wanted to get out there and play good defense, and just going through the scoring uh, that you just heard me do that, trying to find – Points, baskets, uh, getting to the foul line more. It's just uh, Ben hates this court because we can't, both of our teams, we can't score on these standards here that they have. So I don't know if that's what it is or or the dome just socks us out too much. I, I really don't know. I, I mean, defensively, we we were okay for three quarters. Yeah. Fourth quarter, uh, because of our inability to do anything offensively, we had to start gambling a little bit more and stuff like mm-hmm. that. To have a chance, you know, and because uh, I'm not one of these just to sit there and, you know, keep it within eight or to nine, and then uh, there's no difference between nine and twenty. You got to do stuff to gamble and exactly. whatever, and that's kind of yeah. exploded the margin there in the fourth quarter. But we we just literally cannot score right now. We we don't look like we have people that want to go do stuff to score, and uh, and then turnovers again. I mean, they, they didn't impress us tonight except for a few possessions, and we, I think we still managed to turn it over about 20 times against the half-court man. Right. And uh, I don't know. I, 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 I feel like I don't have any answers right now. Um, I don't know. We, we Yesterday in practice, we looked like a team that was possibly done for the year, and uh, I think tonight, uh, especially their uh, fourth quarter, it looked like we uh, was a team that – Definitely look that way. Mm. There's still time remaining in the postseason, but it's a rough ho- road to hoe going on the road Saturday night. Uh, probably Carter, maybe. Uh, that might be. We won't know that till tomorrow night. But right. That could be the team we'll go face. And unfortunately, we've played Carter a lot in region games the last three or four years. Seems like. If it ends up being Carter, they've got three guys averaging double figures. Uh, you know, that, they've, they've definitely been their best team in the regular season in that district. So, uh, but, I mean, I've seen stranger things happen, you know. Yeah. Sometimes teams that finish fourth will turn around and uh, they'll get hot the next tournament. All you got to do is win a couple of games. So, yeah. yeah. Uh, but I don't know. I just uh, – You know, tournament time, too, there's always a team or two that steps up that everybody – continually says oh yeah they've got a chance but nobody really says it believing it you know but sometimes they'll step through that's we watched the game over here the other night when uh clinton, and clinton. yeah beat halls over here and halls didn't really look like the same team that played tonight that they did the other night but 
our guys from up here just watching Rusty, it, there was a few times when it seemed like you'd have three that was going all out and a couple that was sort of caught going from that line to that line. Uh, I mean, we're basically running stuff we have all year, and I, we can't even get people lined up to do the play right. I mean, it's uh, – I mean, I don't care to say this. This is the first time in my 13 years of coaching high school ball that we don't have a team that can uh, remember all the stuff from from the timeout to when you get to the floor. It, <laughs> it beats all I ever saw, and uh, and I, I don't. I mean, there's no way to fix that. I mean, if you if you literally can't take something that we just talk about in the bench and then 10 seconds later go do it on the floor, I mean, there's a problem somewhere there. <laughs> and uh, whether it's focus or don't care attitude, I, I don't know. But, uh, I mean, offensive woes is just killing us right yes. now. I yes. mean, it really yeah. is. And yeah, de defensively, I mean. We're not getting know. any post game. Yeah. I mean, we're not getting anything inside. Uh, I, I don't know. <laughs> yeah. Coach, thanks for taking the time to come up and join us tonight. We know it's tough on you to get out of the locker room to get up to join us uh, after a game. After a loss, it's, it's probably ten times harder for you to come up you here. don't really want to do it sometimes do you well I, I don't want to be one of these guys you know that i mean you know you need to talk and everything when things are not well too and uh not just when you win and yeah. you know uh, i mean i'm not done the coaches are not done I, I hope the players you know want to keep playing and uh you know hopefully i mean i'm i guess this is what's frustrating i i know i know we've won more I guess, than a lot of people would have thought. But at the same time, we're, we're still sitting at, what, 18 losses now, and that, that, that's just killing me. I mean, I've never yeah. lost – as a coach, I've never lost this many games in my life. And so, I, obviously, I'm, you know, putting it all on me and trying to figure out, you know, what I need to do better. Um, but, um, you know, uh, we'll do what we can as a coaching staff. Uh, we're going to take tomorrow off, and we'll go – it was three days before we go Saturday, and uh, – you know, we'll do our part. It's just to uh, see if the boys want to do their part. There, there you go. go. Coach Rusty Yaden and, of course, earlier Coach Jake Wright, thanks to these co coaches for coming up and sharing their insight with us. We really appreciate you. Well, thank you, guys. Really. Thank you. Um, let's see. We've got a couple segments to go right here. Uh, da -da -da -da, and that's our Player of the Game and Hustle Award. Uh, <laughs> first of all, we didn't really have a whole lot of uh, nominees for the two awards, there, did we? Uh, no, we didn't. I was going to let. Uh, I was hoping one of you guys were going to choose those. Uh, I, I, I would. Well, pick, I, I'm, I'm. I'm just going to tell you because so, so we're kind of ad libbing it here since we didn't pick it on the break. I would say Scott Jeffers was the player of the game tonight. He just absolutely so. brought it defensively in that so. first half. He was all over the floor and uh, he didn't get much time. No breathers either. And well, while you guys are, are figuring, thinking about Hustle Award and stuff like that, let's tell you that our Player of the Game is brought to you by First National Bank. Your family, your future, your bank. They're a member of FDIC. They're an equal housing lender, and they've been doing banking since 1904. That's First National Bank. And First National Bank Player of the Game tonight is Scott Jeffers. Finished with seven points tonight, one or two at the foul line. But scoring is not... The big thing, I mean, the leading scorer is not always the player of the game. And Scott does so many more things through the course of that 32 yes, minutes that, that you just got to see him and admire. I really admire the way he's played this season. I certainly do. And uh, while I'm reading this right here, Trophy Masters for over 20 years, they've been serving our community. Uh, for most of that time, they've been located on uh, Main Street in Oneida, high-quality sports apparel. We're, we're all wearing some of that right now, Ben, HL, and myself. It comes from Trophy Masters, high-quality sports apparel, signs, plaques, trophies, uh, custom engraving, whatever you want, 569-8817. And the guys are going to tell me the hustle award goes to. I feel like that. I, I feel like Paul Simon. Or, what, is that his name, Paul Simon from American Idol? You know, we got our heads together discussing this. I only sure. know Paul, Paul Simon from Simon and Garfunkel. Okay, it's probably not Paul <laughs> Simon. I'm not up on my pop culture, as you can tell. <laughs> Uh, we 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 have come to an agreement though. We're going to say the Trophy Masters Hustle Award goes to the freshman who came off the bench yeah. tonight, Isaiah yeah, Washington. Isaiah, Isaiah Washington. Washington. He's there a, we go. He he was really moving around. He he was playing a little bit beyond himself early on. Make some mistakes as you would expect he, a freshman to a do. Freshman. But he he was all effort out there tonight. Indeed. Big big stage for a freshman. You know. Indeed. 
Do we have any scores and a message from Helenwood Foods that we need? Well, to? I can tell you this. I can tell you that uh, Helenwood Foods has got RC Cola, two liters for 99 cents a piece, and they've also got New York strip steak and uh, ribeye for nine ninety nine a pound. Harris is going to cook us a steak dinner this weekend. No, he's not because we're going to be eating at Texas Roadhouse somewhere. Hey, this I'm ready. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we got, we got a lot of a lot of scores have come in. And uh, unfortunately, but we're, but we're waiting on just one yeah, well, important score, and that's unfortunately we don't have that one. Can tell you that Gibbs girls defeated Carter tonight in the consolation game, fifty-four to forty-two. So, uh, you know, whoever wins this championship game tomorrow night is going to be hosting Carter, and whoever loses will be hosting Gibbs. So we can say that. Um, looking at some other scores, Kingston defeating Teleco Plains, sixty-four to forty-four. It was McMinn Central over Meigs County, sixty-six to twenty-six. Wartburg defeating Sunbright in overtime tonight in the District 3A champion, uh, consolation game, 54-51. to 51. Jellicoe over Hancock County, 55-47. to 47. Union County defeated Pigeon Forge, 45-41. to 41. It was Greenville over Granger, 61-39. to 39. That might be a, something to keep an eye on, on down the road. Somebody from, one, from our district, if they make it that far, they're probably going to go up to Greenville. That's right. And one other score at halftime of the district championship game at, up at Oneida. It is the Lady Indians over Coalfield, 35 to 20. And I've been watching that. That score's been sitting on Coach T there forever. Well, um, we, we just know it boils down to very simply. Highlander girls go on the road Friday night. Highlander boys go on the road Saturday, Saturday night. night. Game time, 7 o'clock. Uh, uh, we'll play the number one seed coming out of District 3. Uh, follow... Ben Garrett, follow IHSN, follow the Independent Herald. Ben will put it out there when he. Let me, let me say this before you get done, because I don't think we've done enough of this during these broadcasts. You know, regular season's one thing, but when you get to the postseason, TSSAA charges a big time yeah. fee yeah. to, yeah, to, yeah, to do live video of these games, and I don't think anybody would mind me saying what it is. It's $250 a game. Yeah. So just from our four Scott High games, that's $1,000. Though in the uh, tournament at Oneida, District 3A tournament, we did the entire tournament. That was another $2,000. And all of this coverage, if you've enjoyed it, it is all possible because of First National Bank. If Thank they had you. to step forward and put yeah. up the, the sponsorship dollars to do that, then we could have done the audio. We couldn't have done live video. So yeah. that's all because of First National Bank. Indeed. We, I've said it a couple times last week, but – I know I didn't mention a single time tonight, so thank they, you to First They have National always Bank. supported the high school and middle school athletics. Yeah, they do. They it's do a, a good, good job. Thing. And I can tell you we've got uh, – I can't say who it is yet, but we've got some sponsorship dollars lined up for this weekend as well, Friday night and Saturday night, as long as we've got the agreement of the whole school because it's up to them. And so, by the way, we have to say thank you to Clinton High School as well yes, for letting we us do. be here. Uh, the, the, we, can, we do live video Friday and Saturday night as well. So, so we'll be there to do our part anyway. Indeed, we will. Uh, for Greg Mon, who is our offsite coordinating producer, director, and all around nice guy, HL, <laughs> Penn, myself, Rick, and Cameron, uh, wish we could have brought home a pair of wins tonight. We did not. The Highlanders are four seed girls and boys. We'll be traveling Friday and Saturday night. Game time, 7 o'clock. We invite you to follow the Highlanders, and no matter if it's uh, Aaron 20 minutes away, or if it's an air and 45 minutes away, follow the Highlanders because we've had outstanding crowds the entire time. So Good following, following yeah. the Highlanders. So, yeah, that's it from here. We'll see you somewhere Friday night, 7 o'clock, game time between our Lady Highlanders and an unknown opponent at this time.